and welcome to another rocket build video. I'm Dave Thomas and today I'm building the Estes Twin Factor which is a mini engine driven two stage ringtail model rocket. This is considered an intermediate level kit mainly because all of the parts are cardboard. There's no plastic or balsa in here. And so as usual we will start by checking to make sure we have all of the appropriate parts. So in here we have two rings, first one came out right away, there's the other one, so two rings there, um, two body tubes which are in the small package along with the engine blocks, engine spacers, and the nose cone, and the launch lugs there as well. Okay, uh, And then we have these cardboard pieces that we will cut out to make the rest of the structure here. So there are two sets of pieces here for each ring tail. And then we have two thinner pieces of cardboards. Uh, these will make the rings themselves. And then finally we have a bunch of water slide decals here. And I'm just going to put most of this back in. Okay, and we'll start the build as soon as I clear this away. Our first task is to assemble the shrouds, and those are these two C-shaped pieces here that's on the thinner cardboard. Uh, and we're going to carefully cut these out. Be careful that your knife doesn't drift into the cardboard piece itself. Just cut the little tabs here. And you're going to do this for both pieces on both sheets. So we'll have this long shroud, and then this little piece will become a coupler. Okay, so there's one set of parts. And I'm going to do this other one off camera here, since you just saw me do the identical thing already. Now that I have my pieces cut out, we're going to take that small trapezoidal piece and glue that onto the end of each shroud here. And this is going to become a connecting tab. But first we just want to glue each one and then we'll complete the circle after the glue is dried. So here I'm just going to put a little touch of glue, and this can be white glue or wood glue. Okay, now we don't want too much on there or it'll be all gooey all over the place. So I'm just going to take my finger and wipe that off, and I'll put it on the next one here momentarily. Okay, so here I'm just going to connect it like this. Hold that for a moment, and I'm just going to remove the excess glue. Okay, and then that can set aside to dry. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. And here I'm just going to use that little bit of excess glue I had on my finger. Put it on here. Once more, glue this on to the back side, just press that into place, and let those dry. So these need to dry for about 10 minutes or so. While the glue is drying on my shrouds, I can cut out the base pieces here. This will go at the bottom of those shrouds. And again, these are going to be identical. For now, I'm just going to cut out the two base rings here. And we'll leave the other pieces until later. But once these rings are cut out, we also need to cut out all the little pieces that are inserted here. So the little rectangles and little circles there, 
those need to come out. Now I'm only going to do one of these on camera because again the second one will be identical. So I've got all the holes punched out of there. And now off camera I will do the other ring. I've cut out both rings now. And on one of these, see I had a little knife slip right here. Um, it wasn't very deep. But if you want to make sure that that is not seen by someone, simply make sure that this surface is facing up when we assemble the rings. We'll also spray paint this so it will be hidden anyway. Okay, the glue I used on the shrouds should be dry enough. And what we're going to do is now glue the other edge here and glue this together. Look like that. And here you may want to have a couple of little pieces of masking tape handy here. Just to temporarily tack those into place. So now I'm just going to use a little bit of glue again. That's way too much. Okay, and we don't want glue on the upper surface here, so I'm just going to use my thumb to clean that off. And now I'm just going to put this together, like so. Smooth out the excess glue there. And now I'm going to put a piece of masking tape over that to hold it in place while it dries. And then do the same thing here with the second ring the second shroud it should be. So those need to dry once more. While they are drying, we can glue on the rings to the tube rings here, and these are going to go right inside, or right along the edge here. And so you want to dry fit these first to see exactly how they're going to go in. So this is attaching here just like that. And you want to do this with both of them to make sure everything fits. Because you don't want to be figuring this out when they're full of glue. Okay. Now I recommend uh, for this step having something on your work surface that the glue won't stick to. So aluminum foil or wax paper or something like that. And I'm going to lay down some aluminum foil and be right back. Alright, so I've laid down some aluminum foil and I apologize for the glare here. There's not really no way around it. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to pop this guy back out, and I'm going to use my finger here with a little bit of glue. And I'm going to run a bead of glue around the inside edge of this. So I'm, I'm trying to catch the inside edge as, real, as well as the top surface just a little bit there. It's 
some of that's really heavy. We really don't want a heavy bead of glue here. I'm going to take some of that down. I have both of my rings done now and these need to dry completely before we do anything else with them. So I'm going to set those aside for a good couple of hours before coming back to working on them. The glue on my rings are dry and so I'm going to go ahead and gently peel off this masking tape from the shrouds. Then we'll remove these gently. Might be a little bit of stickiness due to the glue. Just gently pry that off. Okay, and there's a little bit of wet glue in there. Okay, and a little bit there as well. So I'm going to go ahead and let these dry a bit more. Um, this one here still has a bit of a gap in there. So I'm going to fill that in with a little bit more glue. Now I'm going to go ahead and let this dry some more to make sure that all of my glue gets dry. Okay, this one looks pretty good. Um, smaller gaps here I will fill in later once we have the rings assembled. So for now I'm going to hurry up and wait again here, let some of this glue dry, and then we'll come back. Now that the glue is dry, my next task is to bevel these edges. So um, this is what's shown here in illustration step 9, is the outer edge here needs to be beveled inward, and this is going to make it easier to attach the um, fairings here, the shrouds, once again. So I'm going to take some 100 grit sandpaper here, and I'm just going to work my way around. Okay, you want to do this gently. You also want to make sure that the glue has completely dried, or you may end up separating the rings here. And don't try to do the entire bevel at once. Work your way around, take off a little bit at a time. And this will help keep it even. And once I've gone around once, I'll go ahead and test fit the shroud over this because we just need to do it until the shroud fits. Okay, so initially I basically just rounded the corner over. And so this is supposed to set inside here. And the top ring here is supposed to line up with the, the inside of the ring at this point. Okay, so that almost fits just the way it is. I'm going to go ahead and run around this once more. Now 
And I'm going to sand off the little nubbins here that were left from the laser cutting process. again. And that's looking like it's lining up pretty well. Now the hard part to this is going to be holding everything in place while the glue dries. So just be aware this is going to be a bit of a challenge. Okay. So here it has us apply glue to the outer edge here and to the edge right here. Okay, just onto the outside. And this might be easier to do with an applicator. So I'm just going to use this cotton applicator here. And I'm just going to go right along this edge. I'm using a moderate bead here and keeping it toward the outside so that if I have to, if I have any gaps that need to be filled in or things like that. They can be, but the excess glue will be pushed mainly toward the inside, where it won't be seen. Okay, and then I do the same thing out here. Now for the tricky part. We're going to put this on top. And the idea here is to try and line up the outside and inside edges at the same time. So you get your fingers are going to get a little bit messy here. But I'm just working my way around this and trying to seat everything into place at roughly the same time. Okay, and then along here, yep. okay, so it's not quite uniform there. Now frankly, it's going to be more important that we've got a good even edge along the base than along the top. Because the base is what's going to ultimately hold it to the fins. If we need to, we can fill in along the top later on. Okay. And we can also use some tape here tack in the spots that are being a little difficult, like right here where that seam is. And I'm going to go ahead and tape that over. And do the same thing at 
intervals along this. So this side in particular does not want to stay in place. So I'm going to let this dry, and then if needed, I can fill in spaces with glue. And I'll do the exact same thing for the other ring as well. While the glue is drying on the rings, our next task is to cut out the fin alignment guides. And they give two of them here, but they're identical, so you can use just one of them, as long as you're careful in removing it from the rocket. So I'm just going to cut this out. these have some alignment guides on the end. I guess since it's so small they didn't worry about it. And so now we can take our body tubes okay, and we want the white ones here. The yellow ones are engine spacers that we'll use later. I'm just going to get a small piece of masking tape. They show using clear tape. Either one will work. We just need something to close the two sides together. So we'll just start with this one. Now, the main advantage to using clear tape is that if you cover up the lines, you can still see them there. So we'll go ahead and do that. All right, so here we're going to have a total of five lines, and the junction here between the two ends is not a line. So I'm just going to go through here. And five fins on a little body tube like this is going to be really crowded. And we want to make sure that we don't move the alignment guide without moving the tube at the same time. We don't want it to slide or our marks are going to be off. You want to use the same guide on the two here. If I pull that guide off and then try and put it back on, it's going to be really difficult. What I do is make a coupler out of this and this, and I'm just going to slide the guide from one to the other. All right, and then I'm going to do the same thing. Slide that off completely. And coming back to our instructions, okay, we're going to use a door frame or a marking guide to extend the lines all the way down the tubes. So I'm going to use a marking guide because it's really hard to fit a door frame under the camera. So now we'll just go in and make a line for each one. Alright, 
and just give a quick check, make sure they're all reasonably uniform there. Now I'll set these aside for a moment. And the next thing we need to do is cut out all of the fins here. So these are the remaining pieces on the cardboard sheets. And again, we just need to cut through the little nubs here that are left from the laser cutting. So now we have all these strange shapes um, that will be the fins. And you may want to take a little bit of sandpaper and just sand off those nubs. Okay, and that's all it takes is just a, a few strokes here. And I'm going to do the rest of them off camera. Now I have them all sanded and we now need to attach these to the body tubes and keep in mind that we have to be pretty accurate in our placement of the fins around here because these little tabs out here are going to fit into the little notches that are in the bases of the rings. And so they can be off a little bit, we can bend the fin around a little bit in there, but not by too much. The other problem we're going to run into is that um, this all has to be done by hand and eyeball because most of the fin alignment guides out there will not do five fins on a BT-5 tube. So this is going to be completely old school and hands-on. Here I have a small stand that I simply made out of a, a piece of scrap wood and a couple of old mini motors and I'm going to use this to be able to keep these upright while my fins are drying. So we'll start out with our wood glue again and I recommend wood glue for this simply because it dries quicker. You can use white glue if you don't have the wood glue. Okay, and I'm just going to put a fairly thin bead on there um, if you get really heavy glue, it's going to take a lot longer to dry. Now, the trailing edge here should be flush with the body tube. So I'm just going to stick that right there. Stick it on. Take it off again. And wait about 60 seconds. And I'm going to prep the other one as well. So since we have two body tubes, we can do one fin on each at a time. That might be a little bit too much glue. Take some of that off. All right, and then I'm going to do the same thing here. Touch that on, take it back off, and let it get tacky. So that by now, this one will be tacky. I can put it back on. Okay, and I'm just going to make sure that it's completely in line. All right, and then perpendicular, which that's leaning over a bit there. Okay, and I'm just going to put that on my stand and let it dry. Okay, I'm going to take the other one here and do the same thing. Put it back onto its tackiness. Okay, and then also check that it is perpendicular. And I will put that on. Alright, and I recommend waiting at least 20 minutes 
before you go on to the next fin. If you're using white glue, wait 30 minutes. Okay. Here, patience is going to really be the key. Uh, if you try and put these on too quickly, then one of them is going to droop or be on the wrong angle or something like that. Uh, and these are pretty critical that we get them regularly spaced and on straight. So I will do the other ones in turn off camera, and when we come back, we should be ready to attach the rings to them. The fins are dry now, and I'm just going to take one of them here and test fit this. So here's our ring, and these little tiny tabs on the fins are going to fit into the rectangular slots here. And so if I've done a good job of keeping everything symmetrical here. You should go right in. Nope. Okay, I just bent that. Be careful of that. Uh, a little bit of glue will reinforce that once we get it in. Now something I intentionally left out of this was the fin fillets. And I did so in case I needed to be able to bend or even remove and reposition a fin. Once I have the entire ring assembly together, then I'll put in normal fin fillets in here. Alright, so this part looks like it'll work fine. Now I'm going to take it apart again because something I want to do before I glue everything is to check for gaps in here. Like if there's a little bit of a gap right here. Um, I filled that in with glue but it's still kind of a, an open spot. And here I'm going to use some uh, modeling putty. You can also use wood filler for this. I'm just going to lay in a little bead here. And just smooth it with my finger. This does contain a little bit of acetone and some alcohol, so if you're worried about reactions to your skin, just wear some rubber gloves with it. But I'm going to run this all the way around here. I'm just going to set that one aside. Now this ring I applied putty to earlier, so it's already dry. And now I'm going to use some 400 grit sandpaper to smooth everything out. Also, if you've got anything in the slots or in the holes, just clean those out.
Now, if you had a lot of excess putty, you may want to do a first round of sanding with 150 grit to knock that down and then use the, the very fine sandpaper to smooth everything out. This one's pretty much done, and as soon as the other rain finishes drying, I will do it as well. And then we'll come back and install these onto the rocket motors. Or we'll install these onto the rocket body tubes. I finished sanding my rings, and while I was doing so, the seam here popped open on this ring. And so if I apply a little pressure to the side, you can see it open up there. So I'm going to repair that using some thick cyanoacrylate glue. And you need the thick kind. If you have the runny kind, it'll just run down and soak in. So I'm just going to put a little here make sure it's running right. Okay, and so now I'm just going to squeeze this along the line. Actually, that split all the way around there. So what I'm trying to do is, is get an even bead. The glue doesn't want to cooperate fully. Uh, and now I'm just going to take a tissue and wipe most of that off. You need to do this fairly quickly so you don't end up with a whole lot of residue there. And now I'll set that aside to harden. And while that is happening, we can go ahead and attach the other ring to the booster here. Alright, so once again I'm going to go through and remove any excess putty that might still be in the holes here, and especially in these slots. Alright. And now, I'm going to take my wood glue I'm just going to apply a little dab to each one of the fin tabs here. Putting enough on there so that as it goes in, it will kind of squeegee off to the sides. And we can even hit the area right below it here. So if I go on either side, that will go up against the back side of the ring. Okay. Let's now place this over. And now just like I dry fitted before, and I'm gonna do this for real. Okay, and we're just going to place the tab into each slot, and that was that weak one that folded over here. Okay. 
Okay, we do again have to be careful that cardboard is really easily bent. And now I'm just going to smooth this out into little fillets. And at this point, if it doesn't make a complete fillet, I'm not going to be concerned about that. As we'll go through and put in real fillets later on here. Now I'm just smoothing out the excess so we don't end up with a big lump of glue there. Okay, and now I'm going to set that aside to dry. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing with the other one. Uh, and one of these will be the booster and one's the sustainer. And it really doesn't make much difference at this point, they're the same size. Right, and now this one also can be set aside to dry. And we're almost done with the construction. When those are dry, we'll put the nose cone on and the launch lug on, do some fillets, and that'll pretty much finish it. My initial glue job is done, and so now I'm going to apply fillets pretty much everywhere that lines come into contact here. So I'm going to have fillets along the body tube here and fillets along the outer ring tube and then fillets along the connection points to the ring here. So this will be just like putting fillets on anything else. It's just a lot smaller corners and a lot more of them. And to do this, I'm just going to start with a little bit of glue on my finger here. That actually might be a little too much, but just come in here and spread it in. Yeah, um, got both of them at once on that one. I'll have to come back and smooth that out a bit more. Okay, I'm just going to remove the excess as I go here. Once over again here, remove any glue that's in where it should not be. And once again we'll let this dry. Now usually we want to dry these uh, horizontally and this is going to be a little bit difficult with this rocket. What I'm going to do is put it onto this stand like this. 
Um, and this rocket's light enough that it's not going to tip the stand over. And then I'm going to go off camera here and do the other ring and its fillets. And we'll come back when I've got them all done. I'm down to the last few structural pieces here. And so next is the launch lug. And we need to cut this into two half inch or 30, 13 millimeter pieces here. And then we'll have a little bit of excess that will be discarded. So I'm just going to mark this quickly. knife here and cut these so that little piece can be discarded or saved for some other use and then the two launch lugs will just go along one fin on each of the two stages here so just take a little bit of our wood glue dab on here okay and according to the instructions this should go right up near the leading edge of one of the fins I'm just going to rotate that in a little bit And then after the glue dries on this, um, I will go ahead and put fillets on the launch lug as well. But I'm going to do that off camera. Alright, and we'll put the other one on. And the same way here, we'll just pick a fin. Put that right below the leading edge. Okay, now next we need to install the motor blocks. Let's see, I'm missing a step in here, I think. Oh, we got it. All right, so we need to choose one of these to be the booster. I'm going to use this one. And we need to install one of the engine blocks flush into the base of this part of the rocket. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to apply a little bit of glue. And here I'm going to use an applicator. In most cases, it's not a big deal if you have some excess glue forward of the engine block. But in this case, the motor, the back end of the motor, the nozzle end, is going to be right up against this engine block. And so we don't want a lot of excess glue that might interfere with the proper seating of the motor. Okay, and this is just going to go in. All right, and then it should remain flush there. That looks like it might be a little bit too much. So if you get it, if you push it in too far, you can use these engine spacers to re-position uh, it. I'm just applying a little bit of pressure here. There we go. And then you want to immediately remove those so that they don't get glued in. Okay. All right, so here we're going to take our two spacers and tape those together. So I'm just going to need a little bit of clear tape here and hold these. Okay, and just 
A single layer is fine. We don't want these too thick. Now it's a good idea to let this dry for a few minutes before we stick this in, just so we don't either knock this out or glue this in. So I'm going to wait for just a few minutes and then come back and we'll do the, the spacing and apply the forward engine block to the sustainer. So now I'm going to take my booster stage, the one with the aft thrust ring, and I'm going to insert this just until it reaches the thrust ring there. And then I'm going to put the, th the forward thrust ring into the base of this one. And then we'll insert this to get, uh, push that all the way up. Now I'm going to look down inside here to get a general idea of about where that ring is going to be. And then I'm going to put a little bit of glue in there. Now you can be a little bit more generous with the glue on this one as the thrust ring will push it forward. But again, you don't want this really sloppy. Okay, so now I'm going to put that in. And then this. And here I'm going to push on the aft thrust ring just in case it's still a little bit wet. We don't want it coming loose. All right, and then we'll remove both. And we've got a nice built-in fillet of glue around that ring now. Okay, so we can set those aside. And then our last structural step here is to glue in the nose cone. Okay, so this is right here. Check for any major imperfections. It looks pretty good. And so for this we're going to use some plastic model cement. I'm just going to put, make sure you have the sustainer, make sure, uh, and then we're just going to put a light bead of glue. You don't want too much or it melts the nose cone. And now I'm just going to slide down the nose cone inside, give a little turn as I go to spread the glue evenly. And that is the, our rocket. Okay, so if you want to see how this looks, we can put the engine spacers back in. Put this together, they should go right next to each other like that. Okay, now this does still need paint. Um, I am not going to do that on the video. And then there are also some water slide decals to go on. Those also, um, it just takes too much time in between steps to include this in the video. So at this point, um, I will let you finish this on your own. If you do need help with decals or spray paint, things like that, um, there are lots of really good videos out there. Uh, if you go over to the Apogee Components website, I know they have uh, videos for both of those processes. And with that, I hope you have a good launch and a safe recovery, and you'll see me next time in the next video.